Thank you. Thank you very much for the extensive uh, introduction and uh, the opportunity to speak here. So I'll uh, take a look at the role of consumers for responsible business practices. Um, and um, just to, to look at the history of the, the, uh, the, how the role of industry evolved in sustainable development. Uh, globalization leads to less power of, of governments and uh, at the same time to stronger expectations towards the role of industry uh, to take a role as a corporate citizen and uh, not just be responsible for profits but also uh, take concern for um, societal uh, issues. Back in the 90s, uh, large companies like Walmart, Nike and Shell um, became under pressure for reports of uh, unfair labor practices uh, and uh, environmental degradation, uh, which had a serious impact on their sales and revenues. And uh, so first financial investors looked at it and asked uh, companies to put in place uh, effective risk management systems and to avoid the scandals like the ones which, with which uh, Walmart and Nike were, uh, were faced. Um, then also sustainability ratings came up, uh, companies like Standards and Poor who looked at the performance of uh, uh, companies in terms of environmental and social standards um, and, uh, and uh, ranked them. Uh, and now as you know there, is also, uh, there are also sustainability indexes like the Dow Jones Sustainability Index. And of course, uh, and that is probably a new trend that uh, the uh, consumers are taking an increased interest in the topic. So the big question, of course, is, uh, is there a business case uh, for um, responsible business, uh, or is it just a matter to, to feel good or for your good consciousness? Um, in the past, probably, uh, things like the environment and social issues were more, more a question of philanthropy, a tradition where enterprises making good profits would set apart some money for some social projects, but it had nothing much to do with the, with the core processes of, of business. Um, but that is, that is changing, and of course the, the, the question how, what the consumer attitude is towards the uh, sustainable uh, business practices is decisive to, ask, to answer this question. So there are many names for responsible business. The most common is probably uh, corporate social responsibility, but people also call it corporate citizenship. Uh, and uh, I mean, we like to use the, the term responsible competitiveness, which was actually developed by a UK-based consultancy called Accountability International. Uh, and GTZ uh, cooperates with accountability uh, um, and will conduct some research in India, specifically in the textile sector, to look uh, uh, how this concept has evolved in India. Um, so what is the definition of responsible uh, competitiveness? Um, it stands for uh, markets that reward business practices, which deliver improved social well-being, enhance uh, environmental performance, and have sustainable economic outcomes. It's a profitable way for business to enhance productivity while tackling societal, societal challenges. And it is uh, the consumers who drive responsible competitiveness by rewarding through their uh, purchase decisions um, good business practices. But what is the, the attitude of consumers towards sustainable business? Um, it is clear that there is a growing concern amongst people about climate change, environmental degradation, and social injustice. That is becoming an increasing uh, topic. And as I mentioned before, there is the, the readiness of consumers to, to boycott certain brands uh, on which unethical practices uh, are reported by media or NGOs. It happens a lot of time. Um, and uh, this is why all the major retailers like Walmart, Metro, a major German retailer, GAP, H&M, all had to put in uh, guidelines uh, um, to uh, ensure responsible practices throughout their supply chain. 
ethical consumption is on the rise. Uh, I just wanted to show you this uh, recent edition of a famous Time magazine in the US with a headline article on the rise of the ethical consumer. So I, if anybody wants to look at it, uh, I have it with me. Uh, it uh, has a survey on um, what US consumers uh, uh, think about this, how important it is for them. It also has a um, um, a ranking of the top 25 uh, responsibility pioneers and an interview with President Obama and his wife on the topic. So from that you can see that it's quite a big issue in the United States. Um, according to uh, the Times survey, 68% uh, of uh, US citizens uh, believe that there is a need to, to uh, buy products which have been produced in a, in a responsible uh, manner. Um, they are ready to support business for their values, uh, at least 40% um, supporting local uh, business, 82% um, are in favor, and uh, organic products is an issue for 60% of the people. Now there is uh, different attitudes uh, as, as far as consumers uh, trust companies in terms of responsible decision-making, 42% uh, of consumers think they, you can't trust businesses um, in terms of uh, making responsible decisions, and 49% think they, they trust uh, businesses. So that's, that's quite interesting because these different uh, groups of consumers, they of course, they, they tend to, to behave differently, whereas the consumers who normally trust business, they would not probably look out for specific labels or information. They just buy the brand they like and they just assume it is, uh, it is an ethical brand. But whenever they hear any, any story about unethical practices, they may, of course, change the brand or take any consequences. Whereas the 42% who are rather skeptical, they are more inclined to actually look out actively for information or for, for rankings um, how uh, businesses are performing in that respect. Um, in the EU, EU, the trend is quite uh, similar. This is a, a survey from the EU Commission, a recent one. 50% um, of EU uh, consumers uh, are willing to um, buy uh, products which are produced in an ethical uh, manner and um, only 28% uh, um, would normally uh, not do so. Um, in Germany, there is a, a, a large retailer call, uh, called Otto, who's also very active in, the, in, the, uh, in, in, in textiles. Uh, they do, on a yearly basis, uh, a trend study, which is quite, uh, quite an in-depth uh, study. So German consumers, uh, um, are 90% uh, of German consumers are interested in topics of ethical uh, consumption. 82% um, of German consumers still spend uh, as much money on sustainable products uh, as they uh, did before the financial crisis. So financial crisis has not much of an, uh, had, uh, didn't have much of an impact here. Um, and 67% of consumers regularly or occasionally buy ethical products. 65% uh, are uh, convinced that they want to spend more on ethical consumption in the future. Um, now, what is the uh, situation in India? Um, there are a few uh, studies here, although they are normally not that uh, in-depth and uh, there's not a lot of empirical uh, data on this. Uh, one interesting study was published uh, this year by um, a Dutch uh, NGO called Solidaridad. Um, uh, which was specifically asking consumers on their attitudes on uh, sustainable uh, textiles. And 94% uh, of consumers had no clue about what this means actually, sustainable textiles or sustainable business practices. So th they weren't aware of the issue. But after explaining the concept to them, there was a large percentage saying they 55% uh, would be willing to pay uh, up to 10% more for sustainable products. So um, I think, uh, and, and there are other studies uh, who uh, 
uh, give the same story. Basically, uh, we have done some some baseline studies in the in the, in, in in five states where in, in, in where we actually uh, uh, do um, consumer awareness campaigns, and uh, here it was also uh, clear that the majority for the majority of of uh, consumers it's not yet such a big topic, but I'm sure. Uh, this will uh, change sooner or later. Of course, for uh, the um, for consumer behavior, the most important thing is, and that, that is also becomes clear in the surveys, whether there is information available. Because normally, uh, responsible business practices tend to be rather uh, intransparent. Uh, consumers don't know much about it. So the different uh, sources of consumer information are normally labels like fair trade uh, label eco labels uh, and things like that um, comparative testing is uh, is uh, very important these are normally independent organizations who buy samples of products and and and, and test them I'll, I'll come back to that later and there are consumer advice centers of course media ngos and friends and relatives as sources of information uh, we are just compiling all sorts of uh, information available on sustainable consumption in India and will soon publish a sustainable shopping guide which uh, is supposed to help uh, private households and the decision makers there uh, to find products which have been produced in an ethical manner. Now these uh, CSR testing in, uh, in most European countries and also in the US there are uh, organizations, independent organizations doing uh, product uh, tests for, for the last decades and they have a, quite a large uh, uh, influence on, um, on, on, on the sales of, of uh, companies. So in the US it is consumer union, in Germany it would be um, Stiftung Warentest, in uh, Holland it is uh, Konsumentenbund. Uh, normally when they uh, buy products um, and test them and then publish their test reports. The, the well-tested products, they will uh, boost in, in sales, whereas the, the badly tested product would get a uh, bad mark. They would be taken out of the market by the retailers. So their tests have quite a significant impact. And of course, originally, they only tested for, uh, for, for the quality as such. But uh, recently, they have started to conduct tests on the CSR performance of uh, um, of a manufacturer's uh, uh, tool. Um, <clears throat> so they would test both the quality as well as the sort of the, the quality of the production uh, process. And the way they do that, they send out questionnaires and then they also, uh, um, uh, which companies have to, uh, to answer, and then they would also send uh, testers to the production facilities to look at uh, how the situation really is. And the core criteria in these CSR tests are uh, mainly uh, social issues uh, of the employees, social issues in the supply chain, environmental issues, and issues concerning uh, consumers and society. Uh, and uh, they would, uh, within these categories, they would look whether there is a, a corporate strategy to tackle these issues, uh, whether there is a, a management uh, system in place, um, how the strategy is implemented and how the, the, the performance uh, is uh, reported and communicated to the outside. Uh, recently, just last month, uh, Stiftung Warnt has published a, their CSR test on uh, T-shirts, a lot of them, uh, uh, a lot of which were produced in India actually. And the results were uh, quite interesting because uh, large uh, brands like Esprit, C&A, Trigema were labeled as engaged in terms of their <coughs> engagement in environmental and social issues. Um, as Oliver, Tom Taylor, and Zara were showing first signs, but uh, H&M, Max, and Zero denied to give any, any information, which is surprising because they actually do have CSR policies uh, in place, um, and uh, they, they have guidelines, uh, but apparently they don't trust the information they have within their own supply chain, so they rather preferred uh, not to give any information. But the experience uh, shows in Germany that uh, mostly this is very uh, damaging to the, to the image of a brand. So some of the uh, larger German uh, discount retailers, they also originally refused to give, give any information on social and environmental issues. 
but uh, when they discovered after two or three uh, uh, tests and reports that this was really damaging uh, to their to their image, they they did start to put CSR policies uh, in place, uh, and they now regularly provide information on that. So I suppose with H and M, similar uh, similar thing may happen. Um, So what is the uh, the way forward? I hope I was uh, able to show you that there is uh, that, that consumer demand and expectations um, for sustainable business practices is uh, clearly uh, rising. Um, India may not be at the same level yet as, as the US and Europe, but it will uh, surely develop in the, in the same way. Um, your customers will, will ask for, increasingly ask for waterproof management systems to ensure responsible business practices. And the, the recommendations, I mean, there are a lot of different standards which can apply here, but the most components uh, of, of the management process would be, of course, to consult with, uh, with stakeholders, to identify the relevant issues, to uh, set targets and measurable indicators uh, for these issues, um, to regularly measure the performance and document the results, and then, of course, uh, improve the, the, the shortcomings and also communicate uh, the performance to the stakeholders and general public. This would be a typical uh, stakeholder map, uh, how you identify your, your stakeholders. Of course, the, the employees are important, shareholders are important, uh, governments, uh, NGOs, so uh, consumer organizations uh, play a role. Um, so it is important, depending on the business, to, uh, to engage with the right uh, representatives of stakeholder groups. Um, typical issues in the textile apparel sector, but I'm sure you're, you're aware of that, are uh, that is actually also reflected in this uh, CSR test on, on T-shirts. Uh, it's uh, child labor, poor working conditions, forced labor, um, safety at the workplace, freedom of association, and the environmental issues would be uh, water consumption, pollutants, uh, and so on. So to sum up, the responsibility uh, revolution has begun, and uh, my question to you is whether you are ready to compete. Thank you. <laughs>